Welcome back guys. I've got a special video for you today. We're gonna to be doing a shag with curtain fringe. Curtain fringe is really huge right now. So we're gonna be cutting the curtain fringe first and then we're gonna go into uh, the shag after that. So stay tuned guys, it's gonna be amazing. Let's get that started right now. My name is Jake Thompson. I'm a hairdresser, I've been a hairdresser for multiple years. If this is your first time to this channel, thanks for tuning in. And if it's not, welcome back. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get this started. So when this comes down to cutting a curtain fringe and or knowing that you're gonna be doing a shag as well. So let's cut that curtain fringe first. What we're gonna be doing today is let's just imagine that our model parts their hair or customer parts their hair right in the center. So we're gonna find that little center part right through here. Now one of the things about when you're cutting some sort of fringe, curtain fringe, convex fringe, concave, straight, whatever it may be, we want to establish how much fringe do we wanna have. So first off, when you're cutting a fringe on somebody, most people, if you look at this, you know, your temporal bone right through there, right at that specific point is about where the hair is going to part between the front and the actual sides. So with that, let's keep in mind that we're gonna find that point on this mannequin head. And now how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna find where that hair wants to part, right through here, and you can see where that hair parts. And usually, is that bone is about right there, so I'm just following that line directly up right there. So, this is gonna be the perfect amount of fringe for this mannequin head right through here. Because a lot of times when you're cutting a fringe and if you cut it too shallow, you're gonna notice hair that's gonna kind of fall forward. This is where this hair lives. This is where this hair lives. So let's go ahead and do this on the other side. So this is gonna be basically where our fringe is going to live, right through this front area. So you can see again, right where those temporal bone is, and you just follow that right up through here. Now this would be essentially where her whole full fringe is at. Let's get this hair out of the way and let's go about cutting this curtain fringe. When I approach this curtain fringe, there's a couple different things that I do. So first off, we actually found where the actual fringe is gonna be. Now I'm dividing this up into subsections, okay? Now what I wanna do is that we're, if we're gonna be parting this in the center, we're gonna find where the center part is. Now I'm gonna take this specific section and I'm gonna be standing on the opposite side, okay? Now I take this and I'm going to basically comb this all over so all of this hair is now going to extend this direction. Now what's gonna happen is that we're gonna create this line that's in there that's going to live just like that. So with us combing this over, and I'm gonna to go to the, the corner of her left eye, okay? So I'm standing right over the corner of the left eye right through here. Now I'm going to Start by point cutting. I'm gonna point cut this all the way down, just like so. Okay, now you can start to see how that line, now what we want it to do as that is going to extend out, just like so, and you're gonna to start to see how that is gonna create that curtain-ish fringe, just like that. So now what I wanna do is I wanna stand over here on the exact opposite side. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my previous cut section. And then I'm gonna take this right through here. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna see my guide right in here. I'm gonna pull this over. And I'm standing, and now I'm right over the top of her left eye, right through here. Her right eye, sorry. So now that I have cut the first section, taking 
the right side over to the left, and then the left side over to the right. Let's go ahead and take our sections down and we'll finish cutting those. So now that we're going to move into the shag or the rest of the haircut, we're going to go ahead and start to layer everything from this shortest point. Now we're going to do it pretty heavily. Now a shag is basically defined as it goes from short to long, back through here. So short hair up through here, longer hair through the back. Depending on how long you wanna have this, we don't really know yet, but let's start that shag up through this area. So first off, what I like to do is I'm going to find a section that is going to mirror this hairline right through here. So I'll take this a little bit thinner, but this, this section is going to be our guide for everything else. So let's go ahead and put that back. So you can see where my guide is right there. Now let's go ahead and cut um, her right side. I'm gonna take that section and it's gonna mirror my hairline. And if you have a hairline that is recessed like pretty heavily, just make your line a little bit more zagged to follow that because you don't want this area right through here to be a lot thinner than the area on the bottom. So just mimic whatever hairline you're working with. So as I start to come in through here, I'll stand directly in front and to see where my guide is at, right there. I usually cut on the outside of my, um, I cut on the outside of my fingers and the reason for that is because it's much easier for me to control the hair as I work all the way down. So now when I get up to the top of the crown, right through here, I am going to, instead of now pushing things forward, because again, this hair doesn't really necessarily live through here, it kind of lives back through here, we want to start to layer this kind of top area. So how I'm gonna do that now is I'm going to be taking my guides, I'm gonna be taking a small thin amount of hair right through this top area and I'm gonna take it a little bit from the left and the right. Now I'm gonna take this hair, holding this straight up right through here. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a, um, a triangle section where it's a little bit thicker in the back, a little bit thinner in the front be holding this up. Now I want to start to layer everything throughout the top. So we can start to see where our guide is, this little hair right through here. So what I'm going to do, now as that hair, if this gets blown back right through here, you're going to see some height that's going to come in through that area. Then you're going to start to have like these longer these longer layers right through there. And we'll probably bring up this length somewhere in there. But right now, as I take this section right through the top area, now I'm gonna to start to kind of just pivot off of that and then kind of add that hair right into there. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of hair right through here. And then we're gonna take a little bit of hair from our previous cut section that we just cut. And you can see how the sections get a little bit thicker down through here. They're a little bit thinner right through the top. You start to see kind of like where, your, where your, our guide was, which was like right here. And the reason why I cut it from behind is that's where the hair kind of bends. And so I'll just usually cut that off right through there, get rid of it. And then I don't have to kind of like worrying about cutting through here and cutting through the hair. So a little tip for you. 
see where a guide was, about right there. All right, guys, so we finished all the wet cutting. Now I'm going to style this and we're going to finish the dry cutting. Refinement, kind of really just bring this whole haircut alive. So let's go ahead and do that right now. thing is really about the fringe, right? One of the things you want to keep in mind is that you always, you always want to keep the direction of the blow dryer going down at first. So you want to get that center little area working in that area. And then as you move to the front, you want to make sure that your, your round brush stays vertical like this. And you're slowly starting to kind of kick that back. Right, we won't, don't want it to like get all like crazy winged, but we want it to have that movement that kicks back. So that's the first thing right there. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna work the rest of this and it's gonna tie into that front area really nicely. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Right, guys, as you can see, I just finished the blow dry right through here. The key things to keep in mind as you're starting to do a style just like this is to make sure and keep that round brush vertical. Because if you start to actually tilt the round brush, you're gonna create, the flips are gonna be a little bit different. So keep that in mind if you're liking this specific kind of style, make sure and actually keep that round brush super uh, vertical, just like so, instead of tilting it or even having it horizontal because your flips are gonna be different. Your flips like this actually travel back and so they kind of like collapse into each other. If you go something more horizontal, there it's just gonna look like ski jump kind of thing. So make sure that that is super crucial as you're doing that. So let's go ahead and finger right through here and then uh, let's kind of play around with this. And we're gonna kind of finish this haircut. But as you can start to see, what is really just kind of making that whole shag look look so super amazing is that it's giving a lot of width in this specific area right through here. And as you can see how that fringe really just ties in, that kind of curtain fringe, and that's what kind of starts off that cool shag shape from short to long. So let's go ahead and finish this haircut. I hope you guys really dig what we're doing. And if you do, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you are subscribed, go ahead and hit the bell button, get notified. I appreciate it. Thanks guys. One of the things that I really just wanna detail right now is I'm gonna detail this fringe right through here. And so I, I've got some scissors, some B-Max right through here. Now these B-Max are amazing because these B-Max remove about 47%. And so usually if you're gonna be using any sort of texturizer like this, you wanna make sure that the blade is underneath because if the blade is underneath, then the line is gonna be underneath. You know, if I was going to cut it just like this and you were to have that blade up on top, you would actually see your cut line up on top. So turn that blade upside down. We're gonna go in and I'm gonna really just kind of start to remove a little bit of this weight. And I'm going in there fairly aggressive because again, I really want to keep that angle going. And so I'll come in here, remove a little bit of hair. You could actually come in here and get some of this hair off of the actual scalp itself and come in there and start removing some of that now and you can see i'm going to still keep that that line going the same type of line that i had in there before and so that's going to angle just like that now i'm going to do that same thing i'm going to come in over through here on this side now same thing have my the angle of my actual scissor just like this
Now, another way to use this is you can take this and then remove a little bit of hair right through that area. And you can see how that curtain fringe just really, you know, takes that focus, those eyes, just like that area. And then you start to see the shape come down through there. Build that width out right through there. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Let's go ahead and style this. If you guys are gonna do some sort of styling like this, I would highly suggest you get some sort of powder volume grip. Many different lines have their version of it. It's really easy to manipulate fringe like this to kind of squeeze, and I know you guys saw that as I was styling that. So I would highly suggest that, because again, you can cut the shape um, in the right direction, but your product is just an enhancement of your hands. So make sure you're using the right type of product that's gonna get you the results you need.